Hey everybody, it's Lillian. So I'm going to attempt to make an Easter Bunny pie. Alright, before you get all upset, look, we have um, an Easter Bunny with, well, part of its head cut off, and then another Easter Bunny. And um, we really don't eat a lot of candy in the house, so at least I don't. So I figured, why not make a chocolate pie with it? And I'm going to adapt a recipe from the Hershey bar pie out there to this one, and I'll let you know how it turns out. Okay, the first step is to put a pie crust in a pie pan, and it's kind of hard to video with just one person, but yeah, you see. And I just used a just use a refrigerated pie crust. This one kind of got goopy on me, so I'm going to figure out something to do with that. But the next step you do is you flute the ends or um, however you want to do it. I just decided to just do this because it's easier. And after you put what I call bird feet all around the edge, or however you want to do your edge, kind of edge is kind of funky, but I don't really care. Then you put holes in the bottom everywhere, because if you don't, and you put them on the sides too. See how I'm putting them on the sides? Because if you don't, when you bake the crust, then you're going to have air pockets in there, and you don't want air pockets. And sometimes I'll do it like in the crease of where the you know pie and the, the bottom and the sides meet. So I'm just gonna do that too. Now I think it's got lots of holes in it. It's good enough, right? Next thing we're gonna do is put it in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes. If you have a convection oven, then um, when you do your pie crust, because I have a convection oven, you want to really watch the time because convection ovens cook a lot faster than regular ovens. So watch your time and when the crust gets light brown, take it out. And then you're going to cool it and then we'll proceed with the rest of the recipe. Alright, the next thing you're going to do is you need a half a pound of either Hershey, pa Hershey bar or in my case Easter Bunny. So if you have a scale, measure it. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try it again. Alright, here we go. So you see I've got five and three quarters ounces, so I need about eight and a quarter, eight and a quarter, yeah, good math, uh, two and a quarter ounces more of chocolate. So I'm going to cut the other bunny up and put it in here. Okay, as you can see, I have... I have more chocolate in there. I started out with a dark chocolate and then I had to put some milk chocolate in there. So we're going to melt that and then let it cool. Um, but when you melt it, you need to put 16 large marshmallows in it. And um, about the, re the recipe says a half a cup of milk. And you just uh, melt the chocolate along with the marshmallows and think I'm too close. Anyways, along with the marshmallows and the milk, and then after this, it's all melted, you let it cool, and then you're going to fold in a cup of whipped cream, like Cool Whip, and once that's all mixed, you'll put it in the pie and freeze it for until it's firm, and then it's ready to serve. So, as soon as I get these steps ready, uh, each step, I'll walk you through it. Okay, I have the chocolate in the stove. Yeah, that means the pie crust is done. Let's just see. Yeah, it's done. 
All right, I have the pie, the, the pie crust is done, and I've got to get that out, so let's do that, shall we? Woo, hello. Fogged up, Vince. So sorry. You okay? Anyways, if you leave it in for too long, it'll get way too brown. Like I said, I have a convection oven, so... It's got a few dark places, but once you get the chocolate in, it's not going to matter. Alright. So, I have the chocolate in the pan. I have milk in the pan. And I'm not going to put the um, marshmallows in until, like, the last minute. But, I am going to put, like, a teaspoon or two of brandy in. Instead of um, vanilla extract, because... Although the recipe doesn't call for for vanilla extract or brandy or any like thing like that, I like to make things my own, so brandy's gonna go in it. Okay, I've just added the marshmallows, and they shouldn't take very long at all to melt. I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit. I have it on low, but probably put it on medium because I want them to to melt fast. So when they're melted. I will come back and show you so the this, rest. This point is important. If you buy heavy whipping cream because you want to make your own whipped cream, it's really, really important to use either a metal bowl. Well, actually, metal bowl is best if you have it, but glass bowl is okay. But whatever bowl you use, you stick the bowl and the mixer beaters in the freezer to get cold because if you don't, your uh, whipped cream is not going to set up right. And when we do the whipped cream, then I'll show you those steps as Okay, well. as you can probably see, I don't know, um, I, the, my bowl is frosty, my uh, beaters are frosty, and I even put my measuring cup in the freezer too. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one cup of heavy cream to our very, very cold metal bowl. Like I said, make sure, look, it's so cold in there that some of the cream kind of froze on the side. Anyways, make sure that you only use a metal bowl because if you don't then it's just not going to work right and you have to put it in the freezer. Alright, the next is optional but I'm going to put a teaspoon of brandy in there. You can put a teaspoon of vanilla in there and then just two tablespoons of sugar. And It's going to get loud so I'm not going to <clears throat> subject you to everything and if you don't want to do all this you don't have to it's just that homemade whipped cream is way better than cool whip but go ahead and beat this until it's uh, forms stiff peaks and then we'll be on to the next step all right you know you have stiff peaks when you see I mean it didn't take very long at all to um, make into whipped cream but when you can like take some and, and it doesn't flop off of your beaters you know you're done so we're done and we're going to put this in our chocolate mixture that the chocolate mis mixture that you cooled alright this is what it's gonna look like when it's done well when you're done pouring it in there and you just now you need to put it in the freezer and freeze it until it's hardened and then when you get ready to serve it, if you have leftovers, just put the leftovers in the refrigerator. Oh, geez. I hope this is going to fit. Okay, so here is the end result. Now, you see the little bubbles in it? That's actually not bubbles. It is little bits and pieces of the marshmallow that didn't completely melt. I like it this way, but if you don't like it that way, um, feel free to just make sure that all your marshmallows are melted. And let's see, you can also add almonds or pecans to this, like while you're doing the chocolate mixture. And um, for the crust, if you don't want to do a baked pie shell, you can do a graham cracker crust, and that'd be awesome. So I'm going to plate it up and put our brandied whipped cream on it, and then you'll see the end result. See you in a minute. Okay, so this is the end result, and I put some chocolate shavings on it from the Easter Bunny that I actually had left over.